Rogue Gallert, president of the Central Florida Disability Chamber, joins us now. Rogue, welcome to the show. Thank you, Dan, for having me. Pleasure. The Central Florida Disability Chamber focuses on entrepreneurship. What kind of services do you offer for people who want to start up their own company? Well, we basically begin the roadmap for them by offering them business planning uh, uh, programs where we will actually write a business plan with them to help them fund uh, their possible entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneurial endeavor. Uh, in many cases, we will write the plan and then submit it back to the state where uh, the state and through some federal funds that's available for persons with disabilities will help them uh, with some startup capital uh, and help them on their way in the beginning. So uh, it's a very good program and along with that, we also offer different networking pieces, connectivity and uh, definitely a lot of marketing sessions to help them understand how to market their business uh, here in Central Florida. And, uh, and in all of Florida. So we look at that as a roadmap for them for understanding. Uh, they may have the tools and the ideas, but sometimes they need that uh, roadmap to uh, gear to success, hopefully. Anybody starting a business, I think that that would be the case. With the economy, the fluctuations, good and bad, are you seeing more people wanting to start their own business? Uh, in, the past, um, in the past two years, we've seen an increase by at least 15% in the disability community of uh, individuals who would uh, want to come out and start there or learn uh, the, the, the points of how to start a business. Uh, we've also seen that in an increase with uh, veterans with disabilities uh, that are coming back from the war that um, have, pro have started a business but um, in order to serve our country put that on a halt and then now are continuing that uh, endeavor. So uh, that we see as well where we can help them to try to obtain funds and also continuing the business planning. And some of them as well have had a business but want to um, expand it so when they come back. So we see that as a key piece for them. Now you're located in the, uh, the Entrepreneur Center. Correct. Mm -hmm. How does that benefit you for that location? That's a complex of building. Yes, a, a variety of different organizations and other chambers as well that are there. And um, for us as a chamber, it helps us uh, uh, partner. Not only partner, but uh, to do referrals for other individuals that belong to our, our chamber, that we can connect with the other chambers. And, and many other things, as, as the SBDC, the UCF incubator, that also has a, uh, a, a satellite office there, and, and SCORE, many of the other partners, such as the African American Chamber of Commerce and the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and, and the Asian American Chamber of Commerce, which just joined us. So uh, we have all these facets of, of programming that we can connect. Not only, not only is it a great piece for the chamber to partner to get the vision out and the word out, but it really focuses on us helping our clients um, have, a, have a selection of choices, per se. I understand that you are expanding the chamber to other cities in Florida. Is that correct? Yes, actually, we have uh, we've had a Tampa office open now for about a year. Um, it's located actually in the uh, St. Pete uh, Times building, uh, and we're also also looking at South Florida. So we're also um, working with different entities such as the Central Florida Partnership and the Tampa Bay Partnership uh, with uh, great organizations. Great organization, yes. and uh, we we work very closely with Jacob Stewart, who's a big champion for our chamber, on uh, getting the word out. So key partnerships such as that uh, have helped us get the word out that this is that we have a chamber of commerce here in Florida, and not only that, it is the only active chamber of commerce in the nation, and and, and it started here in Central Florida. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Why did you choose Central Florida then to to be the springboard for things? Well, um, Pete Schumann, uh, who is a partner of Broad and Cassell, I know Pete, yes. uh, he actually started the chamber from a national perspective and needed a central hub to carry on the national piece. Uh, so Pete, um, uh, in 2010, approached me and asked me about coming on to the chamber and, and with his vision, continuing that leadership as president. Um, and Pete's you know, uh, main focus why he started this chamber as the founder was uh, he has two autistic uh, uh, children and he wanted to see an opportunity for them as well to see if they wanted to take the road to entrepreneurship but again entrepreneurship has so many facets to it uh, from work transition going into the workplace understanding that so uh, and education that um, I mean, we didn't see that there was there was that gap, and not only that uh, was in in Florida, but also in the nation. So uh, we already have other entities, we uh, such as Chicago and Texas, calling us. When can we start a chapter? So we're putting together that roadmap. So you're almost like a model for other places. Yeah. Then, with uh, people with disabilities, uh, underemployment mm -hmm. is a chronic issue. Why do you think that occurs so often? I think. Um, there are many, many facets to go into it. Uh, 
someone who may have had a disability when, as, as they were born or somebody who may have unfortunately had a disability uh, in some part of their life. Um, use us for an ex example of somebody who has a disability in, in, that can in life, is that um, a lot of things happen with, with goes into medical bills. And a lot of, unfortunately, they, uh, you get into that uh, position where uh, your credit is ruined. Uh, and you start getting into a position where you can't get loans from banks, let alone for, for, for a mortgage, but let alone to start a business. So um, a lot of more entre uh, entrepreneurs with disabilities have gone back to the workforce because of the, those cases when we, there was no chamber. Um, so what we have done is we've been able to give them options to understand that there are programs out there that the state that will help them transition. It's not to support the business for life, but at least to get them back started. Uh, and the chamber also focuses on big things, which is you know we do we, the work transition piece. Um, all chambers do that, and, and I applaud them because uh, yes, we focus on entrepreneurs, but we also have to focus on uh, the workers. The well, work. you offer many services, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So we we offer the Veterans Business Initiative Fund, which is starting in May May uh, May first. Uh, and that's focused on uh, entrepreneurs who have, are coming back from the war who want to either go into entrepreneurship or go back into the workforce. So what we've been fortunate enough is to have Florida Hospital as a founding trustee and Manpower and Career Source recently joining as we've, we've put this initiative together where the, the focal point is to get these veterans that are going to be pre-selected by Career Source to have them placed in jobs. So we're going to have approximately uh, 40 individuals that are pre-selected through Career Source, and our hope is to, we're looking at the goal to have 60% of those veterans placed at the job at the end of the two-month program. And if that, this pilot does work out, we're going to look to expand that um, and do it as, as a quarterly piece. Uh, so right excellent. now this is the pilot project. Talk a little bit about the Youth Entrepreneur Education Program that mm -hmm. you have. Um, Along with the VBI, the Veterans Business Initiative Fund, we have the, what we call the YEP, the Youth Entrepreneurship Program. The YEP? Is the that YEP. what we you said? We call it the YEP, the acronym <laughs> world. Uh, uh, it, it's, it, this, this program started out as um, Disability Mentoring Day, and the Disability Chamber got involved and became a mentor for some of the students uh, through the high school high tech program with Orange County Public Schools. And one of the things we saw is that there was not really a program implemented to help students with disabil disabilities. Now, uh, mind you, the, the students that we work with are students with cognitive and learning disabilities. So um, we saw that there was no program out there for a, a true work transition entrepre entrepreneurship piece. So we did a pilot program in 2011 and uh, with many other partners such as Walt Disney World, Florida Hospital, Lander Health that came on board. Uh, and Orlando Magic uh, were very key pieces to the start, um, said let's do this pilot project with Timber Creek High School. We, uh, and basically the project was a presentation with different leaders in the community and different organizations that came out, talked to approximately 45 students about entrepreneurship and work transition and uh, if they had ideas, how would they start a business plan? So from, from that, um, we went into 2011 and we said, let's do the six-week program. Let's implement this in Orange County Public Schools. And um, it really had a very big uh, uh, surprise to the parents. The parents didn't know that the students were talking about entrepreneurship. They said, my son's talking to me about SWOT analysis, and I've never <laughs> heard anything like that. That's wonderful. And, and it's just, it was a great success story. So Orange County Public Schools came back to us and said, we want you to go into the schools and actually work this as a credit. So now we've taken over the class for the full school semester, and uh, our class is actually based on them getting a credit. So they have to do the homework, they have to focus on marketing, they have to focus on SWOT analysis. And at the end of the program, they have a business plan that they create and present to the community leaders and and their peers so uh, and from that um, you know they will look at where's the next step in their life so right. it's very key wonderful training what kind have you had any uh, budding entrepreneurs success stories out of this? Uh, we actually at it, even though we call it the, the youth entrepreneurship program we want them we want the students to know that this is really about leadership and understanding so we've been fortunate enough that we had uh, two students uh, one student that actually because of the business plan that they created and again not through our program but it, it did assist a little bit was able to actually get a uh, scholarship at full sale because of the business plan that the, he presented that we helped them create um, so he uh, he applied those skills and then we had another 
uh, uh, young man who, uh, because we did a, a tour with the Magic, ended up getting an internship at the Orlando Magic. And now many of these students are coming back going, you know, they've applied all these skills that how it is to be a leader, how, to, how it is to be in that position as a, as a CEO or boss. And now when they go into the workforce and they, and they can transfer those skills into interview skills. So it's really made them look differently, especially the financials. Uh, you know, we've been very successful with having Regions Bank come out and do a great presentation for the students on financials and understanding their credit and how they will affect them. And most of these students, you know, see different things, not to um, uh, argue on any appliance store when they see that free credit card, you get this, you know, don't pay in 10 years. But, you know, they don't see the small print. And, and banks are doing great due diligence by explaining to the students, careful when you do your financials. Right. How can corporations and businesses across Central Florida best support the Chamber? Well, um, learn about who we are. Uh, you know, you can go to our website, uh, which is uh, www.cfdisabilitychamber.org, uh, or uh, feel free to contact me or, or my Vice President, April Shower, uh, or even our Vice Chair, um, Penny Jones with Florida Hospital, uh, to talk about what it is that we do in the community and how that can affect the bottom line of a business. Roga, thank you so much for the information. Thank I appreciate you. that. That's all the time we have for our show today. Please visit WUCFTV.org slash metro for interactive features, special content, and much more. Thanks for joining us. Until next time, I'm Diane Trees.